Hello and welcome to Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Gil Cloud, the Executive Director of Athletics for the Tulsa Public Schools. Today we have a varied show from wrestling to swimming and on to basketball. It's postseason basketball time in two weeks. We'll have Scott Bowman from Webster, Michael Parrish from Edison, Rabu Leva from Booker T. Washington, Conley Phipps from Booker T. Washington, Nate West from East Central, Adina Milner, the head swim coach at Booker T. Washington, and also we'll have Jim Harper, who is the head wrestling coach. Stay tuned as we go through Inside Tulsa Athletics winter style. Welcome to this edition of Inside Tulsa Athletics. Our guest today is the head wrestling coach, Thomas Edison High School, Jim Harper. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, it's been an interesting uh, wrestling season. You told me you had, you've had injuries and you had the <laughs> flu bug and everything else, but uh, we're getting close to the end now. We're getting ready for uh, the uh, regionals and, and uh, team state and dual team and all, all that. So <laughs> tell us where you are right now and where you look forward to as you get into the playoffs. And we're finally starting to get healthy. Um, like you say, we've we've battled the flu bug, we battled injuries, we've had a, a broken foot, and uh, I, I, one of our young men uh, separated his shoulder. So we're finally starting to get healthy. Uh, we have regionals here in two weeks, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, we have uh, two returning state qualifiers, and one of them was a regional champ, Whitney Aslan, last year, and I think he has a chance to make some waves at the state tournament and we have a freshman move in that at 106 that i think has a chance to make a lot of waves too so i'm excited about it well that's great uh, uh how are your numbers our numbers uh, they fluctuated some this year with the injuries and flu and whatnot but we're, we've remained steady in the mid-20s probably yeah, that's some, good. somewhere in that neighborhood so you have enough to practice every day and uh, we do yeah roll around the room and everything we do uh, our experience hurts us sometimes but we're getting there Sure. Who are some of the ones that have really stood out for you? You mentioned a couple there, but. Uh, Whitney Aslan, obviously, he's a senior. Uh, he's currently ranked number two in the state at heavyweight. Um, our 106 pounders ranked in the top five, but he's a freshman. He'll be at 106. Uh, we have a 145 pounder that's, I think, has a chance to do, do some good, uh, Methan Mason. And our 220 pounders had a really good year. He's 22 and five, I believe. And his name's Javon Chapman. He's uh -huh. had a really good year, placed at all the tournaments we've been to. So, uh, you know, those four, I, I think, have really good chances. And we have a couple more that could surprise us. You know, we always, you know, I've always said the teams uh, that win in the postseason have a performer that nobody counted on being as good as that mm -hmm. kid is. And all of a sudden, that makes the difference because you, your good kids are going to perform mm -hmm. about to that level. So you have to have that one surprise that comes around. You really do. Uh, you know, if we can get that one surprise, I think that could propel us you know, into the top six or seven, maybe, if mm -hmm. we get that one surprise. And if not, you know, I, th I still see us as a top 10. Top 10 team. Uh, where do you go to Reasonable? We go to Glenpool, the 5A East okay. in Glenpool. Uh, and there'll be eight? There'll be 16, 16 teams there. there. Okay. Uh, other Tulsa public teams like Will Rogers will be there. Tulsa Hale will be there. East Central will be there. Um, you know, we haven't wrestled any of the. We wrestled Hale early on in the year, mm -hmm. but we haven't wrestled mm -hmm. the others this year. Well, that's good. And what's the date of that? That is uh, February 21st and 22nd. 21st and 22nd. You bet. So uh, postseason is really, uh, that's when it really gets to, down to the nitty gritty then. It really is. You know, we, we'll spend this week and next week. We'll get together with a couple other teams and work out just so our, our guys can see new partners right. and, uh, you know, hopefully better prepare them for state. It's a, it's really a time of focus and you know, getting your goals straight and to get where you want to be. Now, Blue T is at your place. Is that correct? They are. They are. Uh, they've, they've been a big help. Uh, the bulk of Blue T now comes from right there at Edison, our, our middle school. Uh, we have several that's in, in, in Blue T and the area grade schools around us. 
uh, that's mainly where blue tea comes from now. And, and uh, they've had a really strong year as well. You know, we, we're looking at uh, the possibility of putting uh, junior high wrestling in. What kind of effect will that have on your program? Oh, I think it'll be tremendous um, to be able to keep, you know, a stronghold on those kids when they, eighth graders getting ready to transition into the high school years. And it, it's much easier to keep those kids with us. And, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty good group of eighth graders right now that I really want to keep intact. Sure. And, of course, you were having the, uh, uh, the K through, I mean, the, the, excuse me, the 6 through uh, 12 on your campus makes it a lot easier for you to have contact with those kids. It really helps. You know, it, it, those guys, uh, you know, I, I have good help around me and, and they help me maintain these guys and, you know, checking their grades and whatnot. And, you know, it take it takes a, a village to, to raise raise a kid. So <laughs> well, and we're definitely anymore, doing it. It seems like doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Uh, how many how many numbers are in the blue tea program? Oh, the blue tea, you know, it consists of four years old all the way up to mm -hmm. fifteen and I'd say their numbers have to be in the seventies or eighties. Uh, they they have a strong presence anywhere they go. Well that's good. I, I remember blue tea back in the years that I was at Union back in the eighties and early 90s and uh, it was strong as at Webster at the time. It was. And uh, I'll never forget when I took the job and somebody said, well, Blue Tea is over at Edison. I said, no, you're wrong. Blue Tea is at Webster. I said, no, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> you know, I was at Webster years ago, 14, 12, 13 years ago, and uh, Blue Tea was here then. And, uh, you know, we got lucky in my second or third year at Edison. Uh, they were looking for a home. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it worked out real well. Well, those are the kind of programs that we have to have, I think, to keep our young kids moving forward to the high school and the feeder program. So, oh, I do too. Well, Jim, good luck. I, I hope appreciate everything it. goes well at the regional. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have Adina Milner, who is the head swim coach at Booker T. Washington. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Mini blinds, hanger, plastic bottle? The correct answer is plastic bottle. Plastic bottles and jugs are great for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart, but mini blinds and hangers should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Today we had the head boys and girls swim coach from Booker T. Washington, Dina Milner. Dina, it's uh, been one of those difficult seasons in 6A. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely, um, I think we've kind of seen the difficulties since we've been put in there and some of the other 5A teams did. But I think now some of the 6A teams that have been in it for a bit are seeing the difficulties. And so... Um, which could be beneficial that the coaches now can really start banding together. And, and so, um, you know, the complaint is the inequality of, of everything. Um, so you can stem it back to the beginning, the fact that they brought up 11 teams into 6A. So now you have 11 more teams that are in the 6A that are all fighting for the same spot that mm -hmm. before when it was much more equal between 5A and 6A. Then, um, so, you know, that brings in a whole lot more kids, the percentage of drop at the chances of you making in. And then two, um, just how regionals has been separated is, um, it's not even at all. And when you have more of the top swimmers swimming on one side, you're not gonna have as many swimmers make it to the second day and they have faster times than the kids who make it to the second day on the, um, yeah. west side and so this is proposing problems there's just kind of problems all over the place and more and more coaches are feeling it and and i had um already suggested it to amy but um I, it well wasn't. we always want a competitive uh, a fair level playing field and uh you know it appears that there's sometimes that uh, 
has not been the case. And that those will be things that we can talk about legislatively, you know, yes. with the OSSA to look at uh, making some changes. But uh, so as you uh, had quite a day uh, uh, on Friday, I guess, uh, yes. over at Jinx. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was all because of a squirrel. That's what, uh, that's yeah. what I heard. Uh, <laughs> Is, yeah, decided to eat its way through. <laughs> I don't think the squirrel didn't make it. <laughs> well, you but know, we did. <laughs> it, it's interesting because I can remember uh, when I was at Northeastern State as director of athletics, we had the uh, annual Christmas party over at the president's house, uh -huh. and right in the middle of the party, all the power goes off <laughs> on the west side of campus, and his house is on the west side of campus, <laughs> and it just so happens the mayor was there of Tahlequah, oh, and he gets a call real quickly, and he said. A squirrel fell into the transformer. Oh God! <laughs> and Friday, and half of uh, Tahlequah was oh, out of power. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been through that before, and it's uh, and I know from a from a game management uh, philosophy oh. that is just a nightmare. It and, was. You you got all the kids in the gym, and and they all start running around and playing games. And us as coaches, now we have to. Um, we had to just kind of start yelling at him. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Stop, sit down. This is not playtime. Right. You have regionals, you haven't even started yet. And so I was a little bit nervous that they were already kind of out of their heads and out of the game. And so um, it was helpful that once we got back in there, because we were in the middle of warm up when it happened. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to get back in and do another warm up. And I think that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we actually had a lot of great swims that day. Well, so thank goodness, you know, pulled us all back into the <laughs> into the swimming. But it was definitely an interesting start. To I haven't had an opportunity to call my colleague over at Jinx, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to call him later today and ask him, uh, how uh, his electricity bill was. Did you didn't pay the bill? My God, they turned, <laughs> yeah, your, really. turned your electricity <laughs> off. So you got some kids uh, going to the state. We do have a few. Um, we made three girls uh, and three boys made it in their individual events. So that's pretty exciting. Um, it's, uh, it's nothing like when we were in 5A, um, but we take what we were excited about. Um, we kind of had some hits our girls 200 medley relay had disqualified and so that was right at the beginning of the first event mm. so i had to do a lot of recon especially for the poor young lady who had done it and i was like you still have two more events and a whole nother mm -hmm. relay mm. and she was able to pull it back together and she swam amazingly so that was good um but their 400 freestyle relay was extremely exciting they dropped nine and a half seconds and they're Jeez. actually seventh yes. in the state and so they really nailed it so that was quite exciting yeah. So we take it where we can get it. It might not be huge as a team anymore, but the little individual things that we have can certainly sure. become much more appreciated. Well, so. that's good. Well, you know, uh, we, we we have talked pretty seriously uh, about uh, beginning some swim programs at the middle school. Right. And I think that's going to make uh, our all of our swim programs uh, a, a lot better than, than with more numbers uh, mm -hmm. to keep the kids involved in the, in the program. So we're... We're really looking forward this next year, hopefully, to be able to, yeah. to supplement that. I think that'll be great. It'll really help feed into uh, the desire to go into high school swimming. Well, I, I agree. Well, listen, uh, good luck at the state meet. Thank you. I'm glad you came by to visit with us today. <laughs> and uh, our, our electricity is still on. So that's I guess good. I guess TPS paid their... That's their, right. But, uh, my good friend, Tony <laughs> Dillingham, I'll have to give him a call later. Uh, when we come back, and welcome. I'm glad you're here today. And when we come back, we're going to have Nate West, who's the head boys basketball coach at East Central High School. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with. Not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Glass bottle, string lights, ceramic mug, the correct answer is glass bottle. Glass bottles and jars are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart, but string lights and ceramic mugs should be donated or thrown away in the gray trash cart. 
Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. And you know, it's basketball season. And uh, we've got Nate West, who's the head basketball coach at East Central. And the last two weeks of the season, it gets down to really the nitty gritty. And it does. And where you're going to play in the region. And it who does. You're going to play. Mm -hmm. How do you think about your season, coach? Uh, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of quality games and, and we, we've done a lot of great things this year. Uh, as you know, the Green Country Conference is very competitive and we've actually played in really competitive tournaments. We we're in the Jinx Union Tournament uh, where we played Jinx Central and a really good uh, homeschool team from Texas. I forget their name, but they were they were quality. They only lost to Union at the UMAC by two and we actually beat them by one in the UMAC a couple nights later. So uh, we played against a lot of quality teams. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of good things, but um, we still haven't played our best basketball. That's what we're excited about. Uh, playoffs are about two and a half weeks away, and we feel like we can add some things to our team offensively, defensively, that could help us uh, once regionals come around. Well, how do you feel your, your first year at East Central and uh, putting in your program? Uh, have the kids bought in and are you where you want to be? Yeah, you know kids, they can tell if you care about them and they can tell if somebody does not care about them. So uh, our coaching staff, we've done a good job of showing the kids that we're in their corner. We care about them more than just on the court and uh, just looking out for them. And uh, so so they know that, uh, that, that in the East Central program that uh, they're they're valued and they're important. Uh, we've had a great time with the kids. We've got a group of seniors uh, that that have really enjoyed their senior year. Uh, we've got good team camarad camaraderie, and it, it's uh, it, and it, it's owed to them because they they you know as seniors they always lead the charge. Oh, you bet, you mm -hmm. bet. Their last last shot at being famous. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. yeah. Uh, I, I tell them all the time. I said, you know, we got to make this. Uh, experience for our student athletes as special as it is because 99 percent of them nobody will ever pay to see them play again yeah but they do now mm -hmm. and uh, it's the time so as you get i know you coaches don't want to look forward but uh, uh how do you feel about uh your regional and and uh, where your assignment may be yeah so we have edison this friday we've got bishop kelly next tuesday and then we're off for a week and a half and then regional start uh february 28th that friday uh two and a half weeks from now uh we're, we're either going to be the the we'll probably be the fifth or sixth seed there there's a small chance that we'll host a regional but um i'm thinking we're either the five or six and so that'll have us playing the the 11 or 12 and so um but no matter who you play it's quality competition in the playoffs and well i mean what you got to score in the half court and you got to get stops uh, on the defensive end in the half court and whoever rebounds well and doesn't turn the ball over that's kind of who comes out on tops in the playoffs who's uh who's somebody who's uh uh, played both ends of the court, offense and defense. For our team, uh, we we've got we've got several guys that um, make an impact each game. We've got a guy around the rim named Xavier Lucas. He's a junior, number fifteen. He does a great job. He's hard to hard to block out, hard to keep from getting the ball uh, off the glass, and uh, he takes his time. He's got good touch around the rim, and uh, he'll make it through contact. He'll get to the free throw line. And uh, Will McGuire, number thirteen, he's uh, he's been nominated for the Mr. Outside. Mm -hmm. um, he's a really quality player right now. He's a junior. Um, he can shoot. He can drive. He can pass. He, he sees things happen before they happen, and that ball is always moving to the right spot on the court when he has it. Just very sound decision maker. Um, so those two guys, we've got a senior named Mytuan Campbell. Um, he's probably six foot three. Uh, he can shoot it. Uh, again, he goes and boards hard, and he's hard to stop around the rim. And um, we've got a sophomore, Darmontre Peters, number twenty-five, uh, just a guard for us, and uh, he's just so competitive. And he's got he, he's fiery. He's uh, he's he's never no matter who he's playing against any night, he's ready to go, uh, and he's proud to be a Cardinal. So we've got some good players out there on the court for us this year. Who, uh, if you look uh, down the road, uh, who uh, is the team to beat on the west side? The west side, so Dell City, I think they're sitting at 17 and one. Um, and they, they're doing a great job. And I think their one loss was to Carl Albert. I think they played Carl Albert on a Friday, lost, and they turned around. You'd have to check the schedule, but I think they turned around on a Saturday 
and beat Midwest City at Midwest City. And Midwest City is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And so that's no knock on Midwest City. Um, so Dell City, they've got it rolling, uh, quality program. And then uh, obviously Carl Albert and uh, Lot MacArthur was in the quarterfinals last year and they started off slow with some injuries, November, December, but they've got all their dudes right now. And uh, I think they're sitting at like 13 or 14 and five or 13 and six, but they're quality, very good team. It's good to hear. And of course, uh, who's on the east side? East side, obviously Memorial. Uh, they're the one seat on the east side. And then uh, Coach Parrish and those Edison Eagles got a great team this year. And um, Collinsville, Coach and Todd Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, I think they're sitting at, uh, are they 13 and three or 14 and three, yeah. somewhere in there. Um, Rogers is good. Rogers is good. And um, Tahlequah, Tahlequah's got a great yeah. player. You know, there's a, there's a lot of good basketball yet to be played. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. Well, we're glad you're here. Good luck I in appreciate the postseason. And uh, when we come back, we'll have Scott Bowman, the head basketball coach at Webster. I love Will Rogers Athletics because it helped me physically, spiritually, and emotionally through all the journeys I've been through at that school. Um, all of the support staff helped me a lot, and it's just an amazing school. Athletics at Will Rogers changed my life because it became a second family with the support of my coaches and teammates. It's helped me gain confidence, work as a team, and will help me in college and in life. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Plastic bottle, cooler, laundry basket. The correct answer is plastic bottle. Plastic bottles and jugs are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. But coolers and laundry baskets should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome to Inside Tulsa Athletics. This portion of our show, Scott Bowman, the head basketball coach at Daniel Webster High School. Scott, you're having a great year. Uh, it's exciting. You get down to the last two weeks of the season, and now we're looking at playoffs. Right. Yeah, I know coaches don't want to look past <laughs> any, any ball games, but uh, let's talk about what you've got left and then talk about the playoffs. Playoff. That's what one thing we talk about, because we got one more game tomorrow, and the whole practice today is going to be for Nathan Hill. Uh, I mean, they've had a, they've struggled this season, but they've played some teams pretty close. I'm noticing they've and got they a got good a player, player that scored yeah. about 20 some points a game. Yeah. So you got a player that can do that, you'll be able to stay in some games if you don't come out and play hard and you know take them for granted. So we're focusing on that just to get through that. And then when that's over, they did put out the pairings, and we have Barry Hill, which is a right across the road there. I mean, yeah. literally some kids could maybe throw a football that far, but uh, that's who we'll play first round districts. We got it at home, so that's a good thing. That'll be a little help for us, but we'll be working on them and practicing for them for a couple weeks. Well, you know, you look at that district thing. I always thought that was really interesting in 4A. You play the district game that really – you, you, you win or lose, you still play. You still play week. another week. I know. Yeah. You know, and so mm -hmm. why do you play? I, I I mean that's true. Why not just put another regional game exactly. and make that first round knock out exactly. half the I, state? I, I think that's we a need. Good point. Uh, I know I'm on the AD's advisory committee, and uh, that, that's two things that right. I'm going to bring up this time oh. is that we need to go to districts uh, right. for playoff determination. Get out of this ranking. Thing, right. Because good old boys and buddies. <laughs> you yeah, know, you can kind and, of. Uh, and why do we play that additional game? I know why we play. It's additional money. revenue and money, and yeah. for the OSSIA. Right. But and, yeah. uh, it's a, another transportation for us well, if true. we have to travel mm -hmm. uh, or we have to open up our facility again and everything. So, right. Well, well, so, you, so you get the, you got the one game with Hale. And, yeah. Uh, and and uh, it really, I mean, I don't. I'm, I think I don't know the because a lot of our conference sometimes is weird how open day so schedule another conference team. But I think, I mean, if we win this and everything plays out, that we will be conference champs. We'll have the best that'd record. Be great? That'd be first time. So that's a good yeah, first this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty tough conference. So. Well, and I think uh, there's a first time for next year too. Isn't there? I believe we got a lot of players back. But because, oh, tournament of, tournament of champions. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good honor. I mean, we're so happy to be there. The kids are excited. You know, that's first a, time ever. Yeah, I know. First time ever. Well, we were when 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 Mick told me that, I said, well, "I can't be right." <laughs> I know that's what it was. have been around as long as because they were good back in the days. But, yeah, know? but they just never manifest right. itself. So, yeah, and we're excited about. Well, that I'm too. glad I'm glad we got the invite. So. It's going to be a going to be a good deal. So, as you prepare, uh, you say you got about a week and a half after this right. game. Yeah. How do you keep your kids mentally ready 
to play a game. Well, that's what I. This is the first year I've done this. I've scheduled a lot of our games early and left more time to prep for these couple playoff games to mix them up. Uh, We'll probably give them a couple of days off, honestly, after this, just because, I mean, the stretch we've went through, we've won, I believe, seven straight. We beat Central twice, once on the road. We beat Memorial on the BOK. We beat McGinnis. Uh, we beat uh, uh, Rogers. Well, I mean, that's what started was the first one, Rogers. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's just been – they've been battling tough. And, and, and they take it just like you said because, you know, we've never been turned champions. A lot of stuff, we, we talk about respect. And, you know, most people don't think of Webster. And they, even when we win those games, they still think, well, probably it's fluke. It's a fluke, We've got to prove yeah. every night – why we are 17 and four. And hopefully after tomorrow, if we play good, we'll be 18 and four going into the playoffs. Well, it's kind of good having a chip on your shoulder going into the playoffs. I love it. I, I tell you, our boys, we saw what we saw and we were fired up. And yeah. believe me, we're going to work. I hate to say this. And it's funny that I do this because it's kind of bad to do with telling players. I get on to them. Like we had Martoine had a real good game in the Sky Two tournament because one of the players mouthed off and pushed him down. He played. Why don't you play that way every time, yeah. Martoine? Not last week. Well, I kind of did that, kind of with the lack of respect. Some we get. I was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna work so hard now for the playoffs. I mean, we're just taking one game at a time, like we do sure. always. But my gosh, we are gonna work hard for those one games. Well, I think, and I, I think your kids will respond because they have right. the confidence mm-hmm. they can perform in right. big games. I mean, right. you've played. Uh, I mean, you've yeah. played Memorial and and uh, oh, the people you've yeah. played throughout the year and beat. Right. There's no question. And beating Central twice <laughs> in the year is. And most of these kids. Well, three of the starters had played in the in the fairgrounds and played in the semifinal game. Mm-hmm. So they've been in big arenas. They've played big games, you know. Absolutely. I mean, so we'll just go in and just hopefully get better at what we do and make the other teams adjust to what we do. Well, I, I think we all know who your keynote player is. Yes. And what's funny, you know, Anthony this year, his points are down. He was like 24. He's like 18. But his assists are like eight a game. Yeah. Because we've got two other players, Isaiah Sanders and Martuan. Martuan is 40 points away from 1,000. So – we're gonna have two juniors that go over the thousand point mark in one class. That is amazing. I uh, know, and they've been you know they've been playing since freshman. I mean, Martwan's defense gets him out of his offense. He's got the best hands we've ever had here. That I, I mean, since oh, I've been here. So. Fantastic. Well, everybody's well. Everybody's healthy. That's another good thing to have this yeah. next time. If you know, we had a couple. We had uh, the central game. Isaiah had the flu, so our third leading scorer wasn't there. But we're. I mean, we've got some depth this year. We'll go into games with one or two out. And you know, in the past, that's been the difference in a four A and a six A team. Is you know. Right. Right. You take one of our yep. starters out, boy, our sixth guy might really yep. – man, our six or seven can step in. We had a senior hadn't started a game. Alex Richardson stepped in and played great against Central. That's that's a key. I think, you know, I've always said that. I think I said earlier on the show, uh, the teams that have success in postseason at the end of the year is you know your good player is going to play. Right. But it's that kid that you didn't on count with. on uh-huh. that comes up and has that career game yeah, yeah. or career series of games. Right. Uh, that makes all the difference in the Someone world. Someone gets three fouls, we got to set Anthony out. We you got, got something to put in for well, That's right. Well, Scott, congratulations thank on you. a good year and, and good luck as you finish. And thank you we for being here today. Man. And when we come back, we're going to have Michael Parrish, who is the head basketball coach at Thomas Edison High School. Yeah, athletics is so important at Tulsa Central because it's an outlet for some of our kids there. They get a, a better opportunity to basically give back to our community. At McLean, the sports is what mainly drives a bunch of the students to come to school every single day and work hard because they want to be able to come from the classroom to the field or the court and show what they're good at. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Air filter, cardboard box, toy car, The correct answer is cardboard box. Paper and cardboard are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. But air filters and toys should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have the head basketball coach, Thomas Edison High School, Michael Parrish. Michael, uh, it's been an exciting year so far. Very exciting year. We uh, not only have had a great basketball season, but Edison High School's had uh, a great school year with all sports. Uh, Our football team had a great season. Our Palm team just won the state championship. Uh, Cheers competing in nationals and um, girls basketball is having a good year. So uh, very proud of of the student athletes of Edison High School. Well, I think it's been a great year. I know that uh, we had to postpone our national letter of intent Mm -hmm. day because of the snow. 
and we had that on Friday, and Edison had the most. Very well represented. Uh, anybody in the city, which uh, was speaks well, I think, to uh, what uh, uh, the coaches have done and the student athletes have performed. And you know, Gil, I think that uh, just our situation at Edison this year, uh, Mr. Vineyard and, and uh, Mr. Daniels and I have talked about the neat thing for us this year is football's had such a great season, basketball's having such a great season, and they're not really dual athletes. We've had so many athletes in individual programs that have had success mm -hmm. and, and able to excel. And uh, it's just very um, proud of, of all the kids across the boy, board, boys and girls. But it's, it's rare when you see a, a senior class with as many athletes and stellar athletes as we've had at Edison this year. I, I was really, really impressed when we got the signing list. I was, I was really amazed. Uh, you know, normally, Booker T mm -hmm. leads the field. And this year, Edison was Oh, well, lapped it, it literally. It, it's I mean. it's been fun watching this group grow as freshmen. They came in as as a, a a talented freshman group, but talent can only get you so far. And, and a lot of hard work has gone into it by the coaches and the mm -hmm. athletes. And I'm happy for each program the success they're having. For us, it's not time to enjoy yet. We're still yeah. trying to push forward and 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 continue on and and have uh, postseason success. Well, let's talk about that. You've got two weeks to go. Yes, sir before you get into the regional and, play. And then uh, then it really, really counts. Uh, but uh, what's your next two weeks look like uh, as you prepare for the regional? Well, when we did our, our schedule, we noticed that there was a, a kind of a break in our schedule toward the end of the season. So we tried to backload a little bit of our games where we weren't going into the playoffs so cold or, or rusty. So our last two weeks are, are crowded with good teams. We, we play Memorial and East Central this week, then we play Rogers and Northwest Class in next week. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, four really good teams, boys and girls programs, oh, really yeah. good teams to finish the season and hoping that that will keep us in a, a mindset of how important each possession is and, and you know using that into the playoffs. Who's the team to be on the west side? Dell City. Dell City's good. They beat Memorial, um, won tournament champions. Uh, they're really good. Carl Albert, Jay Price does a great job. They're they're good, um, you know. But I think the East this year has, uh, you know, uh, probably more depth than the West does. Uh, the East has some really good teams, and Tulsa Public Schools is well represented. Well, yeah, I think so. I think we got a a great chance uh, to send them at least to the area. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, who knows what uh, what happens. I think Tulsa Public got a chance to bring home the 4A, 5A, 6A gold balls. Yeah. I, I really do. That would be exciting. It would be. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, when we talk about 4A uh, with uh, Central and Webster. Absolutely. No, no question. Uh, they can play with anybody. And then, of course, 5A is really stacked with mm -hmm. about five teams, mm -hmm. you know, that, that can all play. And, uh, and then you've got uh, Booker, Booker T, T in, mm -hmm. in the 6A, so, uh, who actually got beat by Dell City as well. Well, wow. <laughs> you know, I was really impressed with them in the tournament of champions. They, they really played well and played hard together. Uh, and their coach got them, I think, uh, on the same page. And uh, they really performed well. They're, they're well coached. Uh, you know, Blake Griffin's dad, Tommy Griffin's over there as well. And, and so they've got a wealth of experience, um, you know, with some really good players. They're just gritty and tough-nosed kids. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you put that along with some good coaching and, and it makes them a tough team. What do you look uh, for in your, in your region? We should host. Uh, you know, we slipped up Friday night, didn't play very well, kind of a, a – um, coming off two snow days and not having practice. And then uh, last game before seeding, I was a bit disappointed in our, our uh, how we played. I thought the effort was good. We just didn't play very well. And I still think we should host. Uh, knowing who we're gonna bring in um, to our region will be very interesting. I think we'll probably get McAllister first round, mm -hmm. uh, which is a rematch from last year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, whether we're seeded two or three, uh, if we can get out of our region 
our home regional, we would get Collinsville to go to state, um, which will be a rematch of last year's regional final, which I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think uh, we led that game all the way to the very end last year and, and, and got it stolen from us. And so I know I haven't forgotten that. I know the kids haven't forgotten it. So if we get a chance to run into Collinsville, we're looking forward to that. Well, I bet you will. Well, Michael, thank you for being here today and uh, good luck to the Eagles thank for the you. rest of the way. And uh, our coming up next will be Carlin Adkism, the head of the number two Will Rogers girls basketball team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hills means that you have to be consistent, outgoing, and be dedicated because, because students at Nathan Hill look up to, to the football team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hill has taught me to be confident and disciplined and always to be open-minded and always ready to work with people no matter how difficult it is. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Battery, steel can, thermos. The correct answer is steel can. Aluminum and steel cans are great for the City of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. To dispose of e-waste like batteries, contact the City of Tulsa. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Today we have Carlin Edkism, the head girls basketball coach at Will Rogers. I think the second ranked Correct. girls yeah, right, basketball right. team at yeah. Will Rogers. And uh, boy, coach, you've done a really, really good job. And uh, kids have played hard and uh, they're, they're yeah. fun to watch uh, thank you i've seen them about two or three games this year okay. and uh uh boy what, what an exciting bunch you can be down and all of a sudden yeah. you're up about 10 you know? right right they, they are excited to coach uh, we we uh take pride in our defense and that's probably you know that's what usually gets us back in the game is just being able to stop someone on the other end so we we hold a lot of pride in our defense well as you look at uh as your season you know you you've been so successful throughout the year and uh the season gets a little long toward the end. Right. Uh, how do you look at the next two weeks as you prepare for the recent tournament? Well, you know, we just, you know, try not to get ahead of ourselves and try to still take one game at a time. So even though it, it's a long season, you, you tend to want to just go on and start the playoffs tomorrow. Right. But uh, we, we you try to take one game at a time. And, you know, we still got some tough opponents that we got to play. So we have to finish out the season strong. Well, over the next two weeks, who do, who do you have? Uh, we have actually Bishop Kelly tomorrow, who we just played in BOK. Um, then we have um, uh, Hell Friday. And then we finish up with Edison back next Tuesday, so and that's our senior night. So that's it's going to be we got some tough opponents coming. Oh up. yeah, okay. No yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be uh, right. that'll be a good test. Uh, who are some of the, the young ladies that have made a difference for you this year? Um, our seniors. Uh, again, I, I always preach about our seniors because I think this is a good group. Um, just them coming in and working hard every day and leading the younger girls and just showing them what they've learned over the years and you know and, and I think that's why we you know we're having what, a lot of success. Uh, what type of advantage do you have by having your junior high right there in the same building. It's been tremendous for us, uh, just them being able to come and um, watch practice, you know, and, and be a part of that and watch how the girls, you know, in a locker room interact with each other and just, you know, and, and it's also good for me just to, you know, know them and right. just get to know them and, and, and establish that relationship. And so, you know, two, three more years added on the four, that's, that's great, you know. Uh, well, that, yeah, establishing that relationship, I think is important and, you know, we're looking uh, in the future of trying to add a few programs right. uh, in the middle school because I've, I've told our, our administration at the Education Service Center that uh, we lose kids in middle school. We don't lose kids in high school. Right. And if we can retain those kids there in the middle school, we've got a really good chance. And yes. I think the model that we have at Rogers and, and Edison and Central, uh, you know, where we have the uh, junior high through the high school together, mm -hmm. Uh, it makes it a lot better for our coaches and, and the student athletes and Definitely. the parents. They get to know the coaches and, and how the yeah. program is run and everything. I think it's right. a it's a really good thing. Well, who is the team to beat on the west side? 
Oh, wow. It's, uh, you know, Piedmont been, you know, a, you know, a front the whole season. They've been playing pretty good basketball. I mean, you have MacArthur down there and um, El Reno and Dale City. So it's Carl Albert. Um, but I will put Piedmont ahead of those. And, and, and But it's, it's just tough. You know, it's just tough on that side. So it's uh, they're, they're sending Carl Albert on our side this year. So mm-hmm. it's going to be tough. Yeah. And just add an addition with Carl Albert on this side is, you know, you got to be ready to play some basketball. Well, all right. you get all the right. postseason, and uh, well, yeah, everybody's about ready to play at that right, time, and right. uh, so on. So, uh, so you got the next two weeks is a build up for that. Then you've got the uh, uh, obviously outside of the, the Lady Ropers, who, who's the team on the east side? Oh, outside of us, uh, you know, in our own backyard, you know, we always you always see East Central up there with us. Um, Edison's playing good this year. Um, um, you have Kawita and uh, Pryor. Um, so we have a stacked side too, you know. Mm-hmm. We we have some good teams on this side too. That's just you know, just as quality teams. Well, it looks like you'll be able to host, so that's uh, yeah a positive, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, we, we've we've had a good season to you know put our right. pos- ourselves in a position to host. Well, it'd be uh, be great if the boys could do that too. Yeah, right. Have it all right there at Rogers. Right. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. as you uh, as you look at uh, preparation, uh, do you taper off the last two weeks or? Is it still just as intense as you get ready to go to the playoffs? Or? Oh, yes, definitely still intense. Uh, you you want to be peaking at this time. And, and, and you can't peak too early, too. So mm-hmm. right around this time, you want to be ascending up and, and peaking at the and playing great basketball. And um, so we, we still have intensity in, in our practices and go hard. And maybe not four or five days a week, but, you know, right. we, you know, we kind of, um, you know, still have that same mindset. You know, you always want to, and you talked about your seniors, mm-hmm. yeah, you always want to uh, – uh, know that they're going to peak at the right time. Right time. And, you know, they've been in the program now four years. And right. you don't want them to think one right. done right. at this point. point. But, yeah. uh, you know, when you when you throw it out there that this is your last shot. Last shot. You know, last shot. Senior. And, and, and I, you know, I don't think it's hit them yet, you know, but I try to throw it in there every once in a while. I'm like, you realize this is your last time playing Edison. <laughs> you know, you realize this Absolutely. is your last time playing McLean. Yeah. This is your last time. Kids yeah. don't, they don't no, get that. No. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, Vince Lombardi, when he was coaching the Green Bay Packers, said, you know, mm-hmm. in a football game, there are only about seven plays that determine the difference in the game. I remember, I remember. The problem is you don't know when, when those seven occur, so you have to go 110 every single the play. whole play, right? You know, right, and you right. never know when it's going to be over. You know, right. my daughter blew her knee out uh, her junior year in summer league, and didn't play her senior season. They'd gone to the runner-up in 5A that year at Union. Wow. And I always said you never know no. when it's your last game. Never know. Well, Carla, thank you for being thank here. You. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. And when we come back, we're going to have Connolly Phipps, the head boys basketball coach at Booker T. I love Will Rogers Athletics because it helped me physically, spiritually, and emotionally through all the journeys I've been through at that school. Um, all of the support staff helped me a lot, and it's just an amazing school. Athletics at Will Rogers changed my life because it became a second family with the support of my coaches and teammates. It's helped me gain confidence, work as a team, and will help me in college and in life. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Plastic bottle, cooler, laundry basket. The correct answer is Plastic bottle. Plastic bottles and jugs are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. But coolers and laundry baskets should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have the head basketball coach at Booker T. Washington, Conley Phipps. Conley, welcome to the show. Thanks, Coach. Boy, I tell you what, uh, it's been a trip this year, huh? Yes, it has been up, up and down, and all around. It's uh, up and down. You, you play really well, and then you don't play so well. But uh, you still have that chance to win that Frontier Conference. Yeah, big, you know, big game Friday night. Jinx at our place, and uh, you know we're playing for a lot, playing for a little breathing room in the in the Frontier Conference with four games left, and probably playing for the number one seed uh, on the East Side in six A uh, for the for the state championship. So uh, it was a good win for us. They've got a heck of a team. 
uh, as you know, Clay does a great job. And, uh, you know, like we talked about before, every night in the frontier, no matter where you are, you better be ready. You know, I thought, uh, I thought it was uh, well played. Uh, I think bo both teams uh, left it all out there. I don't think there was anything left in the in the tank. And, oh, it was a great high school game. Uh, yeah. You know, both teams wanted to win bad, competed, uh, played tough. Uh, uh, you know, I was really proud of my guys, uh, the way we the way we fought and got down pretty big early. You know, oh, you're 18 down, 10 you're, you're down 18 to 10 at the end of the first quarter at home against a really good team. Right. Uh, you know, you kind of find out what your what your worth right there, and, well, and uh, guys guys battle back. So it was a huge night for us. Well, I had a great crowd uh, with the Ring of Honor uh, ceremony going on between the games, and uh, you always want to play well when you have people who are in the gym who don't normally don't come to the gym. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and watch your team play, but uh, uh, I was uh, I was uh, very impressed. I think uh, with the composure uh, when you had that eight point deficit. Uh, they did. They never lost their cool. They played through the the different yeah. things that they had to get done in order to get back in the game. Yes, uh, you know we've got some experienced guys, and and obviously Bryce played at a high high level and has been, and you know and Jalen and Trey are out there. They've been been through some battles, and and they, they showed great leadership, and uh, you know it was a it was a it was a heck of a heck of a game, and you know like. Like you said, with the legendary, you know, people that that came before those guys, I think there was four uh, former uh, Player of the Year uh, Booker T boys basketball players there watching the game, getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. So it was a it was a really neat environment for our for our players. Well, it, and it, uh, those kinds of ball games obviously prepare you for postseason play. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, you've got to be tough and play well down the stretch and and uh, definitely help us down the road. Who do you think is the team to beat on the west side? Well, I'll tell you, Southmore with five starters back, uh, you know, and and uh, even though they've lost a couple times in the last two weeks, but it's that time of year. I yeah. mean, it, it, you, you look at any level, good teams are getting beat right now. Mm -hmm. and, and then they, you know, they figure it out and start playing well when it counts. Uh, Southmore's really good. Edmond Memorial's really good. Midwest City's good. Lawton's good. You know, kind of a sleeper on that side, I think. Uh, Edmond North, Scott Norris is a heck of a coach, and they'll be ready to go. So really good teams on that side of the state. Well, of course, uh, you, uh, are they sending somebody over from the West to play They're over here? sending uh, Mustang, Yukon, and Putnam City North. I see. And and uh, so three good teams yeah. from this side. And, and uh, you know, without the districts, uh, you know, you go on the coaches' rankings, it's not an exact science. <laughs> you know, we played uh, uh, we played the same team in the regional finals last year we played in the state championship. So that's – that usually is not supposed to happen, right? Right. right you know, right, so, right. Uh, but there may not be any good way to do it. But uh, you know, I I'd sure like to see districts. I think everybody on this side of the state would. I don't know anybody th now uh, that uh, would oppose that, and uh, I think that's one of the things that when the uh, OI AAA Board of Directors meet uh, at the OSSA to look at the recommendations from the coaches' advisory. Uh, we're going to bring that up again because I think we put too many personalities in that ranking situation. You know, I was talking to uh, Scotty Bowman earlier today, and uh, they've beaten everybody they need to beat. And one team over on the west side ranked them 16th. Yeah. How in the world can that be? Right. I mean, that's not, right. they should be one or two. And uh, so they get into – gerrymandering the right. rankings so sure. I don't have to play this one or I don't have to play that one. For sure. And I, we got to take that out of those hands. Well, as you get ready, uh, you got uh, two weeks to go. Uh, everybody well? Everybody's healthy. Knock on some wood and, uh, you know, trying to just keep getting better. And we've got four, like I said, four conference games left. And then we'll have the, the regionals and uh, hopefully make another run of the gold ball. Well, it'll be great to be able to host again and uh, boys and girls. That'll be fantastic. Yes, and, yes. Uh, there in Nate Harris, and I think uh, uh, the crowd will be good, I'm sure, because yes. it is postseason play. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, we appreciate you uh, and the effort uh, that uh, you have there at uh, Booker T. It's a, it's a big job, and uh, they, they've uh, performed very well. And so we look forward to postseason play uh, 
Uh, I'm sure I'll be around somewhere I hope one so. of those. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, thanks for coming today. You and bet, uh, when we come back, uh, we'll have Rabu Leba, who is the girls coach at Booker T, and we can talk about postseason play and the last two weeks of the season with him. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person, because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with, not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Glass bottle, string lights, ceramic mug. The correct answer is glass bottle. Glass bottles and jars are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart, but string lights and ceramic mug should be donated or thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have Rabu Leva, the head girls basketball coach at Booker T. Welcome to the show, Rabu. Thank you for having me as always. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you've had a pretty good year. Well, it's been a blessing. I mean, the kids came in this summer. Um, last season did it in the way we would have liked, and they really made a decision to put the work in and then control the controllables and see what can happen. It's been a really enjoyable year. Well, you've, you've played the tough competition. Yes. All year long. And, uh, you know, playing the Frontier Conference is always a challenge. Every Tuesday and, and Friday, you have a, <laughs> a new challenge. You do. You do. And, of course, the Tournament of Champions and everything. So, as I look at uh, this last two weeks, uh, uh, who do you have scheduled? And how does that prepare you for the end? Well, we have Bixby on Tuesday, and they play, they're a tough team, well-coached team. Um, they'll play a lot of pack line defense, man-to-man. -man. That'll get us ready for playoffs. Mm -hmm. Fewer possessions, better execute better. Um, and really, our entire conference, like you said, every night really prepares us to get us ready for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Jinx uh, last Friday, very talented group, well-coached. Um, so every night we're like, we got to strap up and be ready to play. And boy, you kind of ran away from Jinx there toward the end, didn't you? Uh, you know, we did, and what we've hung our hat on all year long is playing tough defense. Uh, we call it Track Tuesday. So every Tuesday we go to the track no matter what. Mm -hmm. They love that, as you can imagine. Um, but it gives us an advantage of mental toughness that playing defense for four quarters. For most teams, we believe they're going to wear down come that third and fourth quarter. And we were fortunate to make some shots and kind of wear Jinx down. Well, we made some shots, and uh, it was a great atmosphere, the uh, ring of honor ceremony uh, between games and everything. It had a great crowd and, and a lot of alumni uh, showed up to, to, that had, don't normally come. And I think it was good when they see a good good ball game like that. Oh, no doubt. I mean, the girls played a good game. The boys played a good game. Uh, I think both our boys and girls are in first place in the Frontier Conference. So I think that's really got, get, gotten both programs ready to have a good state run. I think it's, uh, uh, you know, you look back uh, – uh, three years ago when we made this decision and uh, it was it was a difficult decision yeah I've been in the green country for ever and ever and uh, and had really played well in the green country uh, and we look at being a 6a we're going to be 6a forever it looks like it looks like it yes. so why don't we play 6a competition yeah. and uh, now it looks like uh, it was a pretty good decision for the program. It definitely was. I think knowing that we're going to be 6A, you know, and 6A for the foreseeable future, right. to play 6A teams night in, night out. Um, and there's no knock against the green country. There's some great battles at East Central and Edison. Oh, um, you know, both quality conferences. But it's, I think it's been a good move for Booker T. Yeah, I do too. I think it's an exciting time. All right, so you've got some – Tough conference games left. Yes. And then you've got the region. Uh, who do you think is the team to beat on the west side? Um, on the west side, you know, more that we saw at tournament champions, they're, they're, they're hot right now. Yeah, they're yeah. playing real well. Um, Edmund North has had some losses, but they're very – they play hard, you know, good team. And then kind of a dark horse, Deer Creek was ranked one, and they just lost to Norman North last mm. week. So – I tell my girls in 6A, people make it sound so easy, like, oh, just go win. And, you know, you've got to be playing good ball at the end. So there's about eight or nine teams that on any given night can go win that. Can go, go win ball. it. Yeah. yeah. 
So over here, obviously, uh, you're top seeded. Uh, We're number two. They, yeah. Norman, which which is, it looks oh, like, it end up being oh. number one in the state. So yeah. potentially it could be one and two on this side of the state. Oh my! Um, but I tell the girls, you know, at the end of the day, you got to beat everybody. So sure, play them early, play them play, late. You know, play them yeah. early, play them late. Um, yeah. And and we talked earlier about control the controllables. Like, let's take care of things we can control. Get a little lucky and try to make it to state. Well, yeah. So uh, you'll probably host. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll either be the two or three seed. Right, and so and, you're, and the boys will host. So and the boys will host. Yes, you'll have a good weekend at uh, at home. We'll have a good weekend at the high, and, definitely. Yeah, right, absolutely. And uh, how does that uh, how does that you think affect your play as you move into the playoffs? I think the biggest thing it gives us is you know here's the goals I gave the girls. Let's try to win our conference, which we're number one right now. If we win our conference, we'll host a regional. If you're hosting a regional, you give yourself a better chance to get to area, get a little bit lucky at area and find your way to state. And so it gives us kind of a stair step along the way the girls can point to. Mm-hmm. We accomplished this. Now we're, we're hosting regionals. Let's find a way to area and then get to state. Well, who's, uh, who, who's a couple of players you think have really made a difference in your program this year? Well, you know, there, there's so many. I hate to just name one or two. Sure. No, no doubt, though, uh, this senior class with Yvette Mayberry, who's going to ORU, uh, she came back her, her junior year last year, was her first year at Booker T. Phenomenal player, and her willing to be unselfish. I mean, she'll score. She guards the other team's best player night in, night out. Um, she'll get assists. She re- she's our second-leading rebounder. So she's been a great addition. I tell Lee all the time, thank you for moving back to Tulsa. Because mm-hmm. those kind of yeah, players right. make a difference, you know. Absolutely. But Armani Reed's going to HBU. Amari Williams is one state, one of our better defenders. Alex Anderson. So this senior class has been really good for us. It's good to have that good senior leadership. Yeah. It, it makes all the difference because, you know, there's only, as a coach, we can lead them to the water, but you can't make your team drink. That's right. Those seniors have got to drink the working hard, the weights in the morning, the extra shots. And if they do it, Everybody else will fall in love. They got to drink that Kool Aid. They got to drink that Kool Aid. Yes. <laughs> well, Rabu, uh, congratulations on a good year. Thank you. I uh, hope you win that Frontier Conference trophy. It'd be great to have that uh, over there at Booker T in that in that trophy case. That'd be great. And, yes. Uh, good luck postseason play. I know uh, it's always our goal to go to state uh, at Booker T, and uh, you've been there. You've won it. Yes. Let's just try to do it again. Oh, no doubt about it. All right. <laughs> when we come back, I'll have some closing comments. athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. I am a high school student athlete which means I'm still learning some of life's most important lessons. I am learning how to persevere through difficult and challenging times. And about determination and playing for my teammates. I'm learning to respect my opponent. Through participating in activities at my school. Mom, dad, coach. With time, I won't remember the wins and losses. But I will remember what I learned about how you acted towards my teammates, opponents, officials, and other fans. What lessons do you want me to learn? Sportsmanship is everyone's responsibility. Do the right thing. This message was brought to you by the Oklahoma Secondary School Activities Association. One team that has really done a great job this year is the Rogers Girls basketball team and Carlin Edkism. I ranked second in the state in 5A. Uh, really have played really, really well. And we look forward to them hosting postseason as well as Booker T. Washington probably will host uh, boys and girls. Edison's boys will also host. What that means is we'll have a great opportunity to see postseason play right here in Tulsa at our local gymnasiums. Certainly hope that you get out and support our boys and girls basketball teams as they prepare to go to the state tournament. Next time, we'll see you on Inside Tulsa Athletics.